What's up? Welcome to the South Pole Greenhouse. So the greenhouse is something that we are super lucky to have here at the South Pole. A lot of other stations like McMurdo, for example, don't have one. And this is honestly huge, especially during the winter when there's absolutely no flights. Being able to get some sort of like fresh stuff and even come and, you know, touch leaves and plants. It's a, it's a pretty big deal. And as you can imagine, it's one of the things that I get the most questions about, which is why I'm making this video. But the first question and the biggest question that I tend to get is what do we actually grow here? And the answer is surprisingly diverse. So first of all, we have a ton of different types of greens, everything from romaine lettuce, um, summer crisp lettuce, uh, arugula, bok choy, kale, all kinds of stuff like that. And then we start doing other fun things like certain, certain herbs like chives and rosemary and even uh, some peas over here. And uh, we have chili peppers and probably my favorite thing favorite thing is the tomatoes. Having tomatoes is such a game changer, especially in certain things like sandwiches and whatnot, so, or salads, but yeah, we grow all kinds of stuff, which is pretty incredible. The next question then quite frequently is how much do we actually grow? And that is, uh, it's, it's a pretty cool thing. The, the first little fun fact actually, they used to have a full-time greenhouse tech here during the winter and they got rid of that position a number of years ago. And this year, this winter at least, is the absolute record of the most harvest and most turnout that we've been getting from the greenhouse. So that's really special. It's like a completely volunteered thing at this point. And they are doing their own research. They learned some stuff from the summer crew. And yeah, I mean, they're absolutely crushing it. But on average, we're harvesting about 10 kilograms of freshies or fresh things every week and the record I believe was about 16 kilograms in one week which is pretty insane. As far as like how often we eat it, generally we have something from here pretty much every single day whether that's a salad, some greens and tomatoes and all that stuff or if it's something like adding some greens like bok choy to your omelet in the morning or maybe it's sauteed greens for dinner so we generally have something fresh pretty much every single day which is super special and we are so lucky to have that. So, what's the actual process of all this? Well, um, I am not involved this year. My last winter that I was down here actually was one of the greenhouse volunteers, so I have a little bit of an idea. But as far as I can tell, basically, first you get some seeds, and then once you have seeds, then you plant them. And these little guys here, they're like little, they're like little moss tray type deals, and they're just sitting in, uh, in just some fresh water. And it's just, just regular old water and it sits there until it gets its secondary leaf development, which takes about two to four weeks depending on the plant. And then once that happens, then it gets moved into the, the, primary, uh, the primary greenhouse system. And then as far as daily tasking goes, the people that are in here actually working, they come in and they're doing things like cleaning the trays, harvesting things, planting new things, and then daily checks of conductivity and also pH to get a general idea of the nutrient levels in the water. Another question I tend to get quite frequently is actually about the hydroponic systems themselves. I'm by no means an expert in any of this, and so this is entirely what I've been told from the people that are working in the greenhouse, but I figured I'll give you a a quick rundown of the situation. But basically how it is, is that we have four different systems in, in the greenhouse. There's three in the main growing room, and then there's one here in the hobby room, or the, uh, the hangout room, or whatever you want to call it. Now basically systems one and three, so the ones on the two outsides, they have one type of hydroponic system, which is called ebb and flow, which means that the nutrient mix is constantly washing over the roots. The two other systems, however, system two, which is in the middle of the growth chamber, and system four, which is out here in the hangout room, they run under a thing called deep water culture system, which means that the roots are constantly submerged in the nutrient blend, but they do have like little air bubbles aerating through the system. However, as far as actual nutrient mixes go, we do have a nutrient mix. I don't know too much about that. It's got all kinds of different stuff in it. The one thing I do know is that system two here in the middle is the only one that has a unique nutrient mix. The other three, one, three, and four, are all the same, but system two, which we primarily use to grow tomatoes, has its own system because it needs, uh, 
and has different, different nutrient requirements, which are, you know, what make tomatoes happy. There you have it. As you can tell, the greenhouse is something so, so special that we have here at the South Pole. And we are honestly really, really lucky to have access to this because so many stations on this continent don't. And being able to just have, have access to fresh things year round is, is pretty amazing, especially since even during the summer, there aren't really that many planes because weather is hard and summer only lasts a few months. But aside from the food that we get, there are so many other benefits to having this place. For one, it's humid. <laughs> like right now, I'm like kind of sweating a little bit, which is just a really rare feeling unless you're sweating because you're dressed up all the way. Here you're sweating because it's warm and humid. And that's a really nice thing. And then in addition to that, when you have the growth lights on, which they're actually on at night, we, we have the greenhouse, I guess the lights are on at night. And, but if you come in or early in the morning and there's, there's people that come in here to drink their coffee in the morning, like before work or before breakfast, and the, the light is just really nice. It's like the closest thing we have to natural light when the sun isn't up or if you don't have one of those happy lamps in your room. So being able to come in here and get light and just smelling and like touching fresh things is super special. And yeah, we are, we are really, really lucky. Um, after talking to some of the people that actually are in here quite frequently, it seems that about 25 to 30% of the station uses the space pretty regularly. And then there's other people like myself that come in here every once in a while. I actually I actually wish that I was spending more time in here. I spent a lot of time in here in my last winter and I, I kind of I kind of missed that a bit, but you know, I've got so many other things keeping me busy that I often find it hard to find time to come down here. So I'll be honest, I've really enjoyed filming this video because I get to spend like, you know, 45 minutes an hour in here and hang out and smell the smell the, the lettuce <laughs> but yeah that's uh that's for the most part it I do have one other little fun fact that I wanted to share and that this uh, this greenhouse was actually developed when this new station was built the station was finished in about 2008 2009 that time right there and this greenhouse was originally built as kind of like a NASA experiment to you know start developing hydroponic systems and such to see how things would do in in space and whatnot so that's a pretty cool fun fact i heard but yeah that is it uh thank you so much for watching this video i hope that i answered any and all of your greenhouse questions if you have any others just leave them in the comments down below and i'll answer them to the best of my ability like i said i'm not an expert in the actual growing systems and i just volunteered here two years ago and now i just you know talk to the people that are working here now so by no means an expert, but I'm more than happy to try to find out any answers to any questions that you might have. But yeah, on that note, that is it. So thank you once again so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you go down below and hit the little like button, subscribe, bell, comment, share, you know the drill. Uh, man, it's, I have to keep saying that every single video. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about it. But anyways, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you next week.